When will I be cheap famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is for F Beauty and you, my darlings, are very welcome. So, mask wearing. It's been a bit of a thing recently. You may have noticed. Uh, and I got asked if I could do a tutorial for a work appropriate look when you're wearing a mask. So, this is a tutorial using a neutral palette. I know. Who am I? <sighs> Clearly I'm still not well. And basically I talk you through how to achieve this look and why I did the specific steps that I did and things to perhaps change about your routine whilst mask wearing is de rigueur, darling. So, as I've said for some considerable time, oft here echoed on the Western two channels. But I've got some of the sloth on my side, and have you seen the length of the sloth's claws? Have you? Have you? I wouldn't cross one. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, it's been a while since I filmed because tooth problems if you remember. Uh, still haven't managed to find a dentist. Uh, <laughs> all the NHS dentists in my area are currently clearing the backlog they had while they were locked down over the four months of lockdown. So, <laughs> I basically got a bit of sandpaper and attacked my own rough tooth and smoothed it off with sandpaper so it was no longer cutting my tongue. DIY dentistry, <laughs> not advised. <clears throat> but it does mean I can talk again, which is nice. Right, um, you can see I've got quite a few breakouts at the moment. Thank you. You can see I've got quite a few breakouts at the moment. Uh, that's because of mask wearing. Um, part of our life at the moment. But I have been asked to do a tutorial taking into account the fact that we're all wearing masks now. Or we should all be wearing bloody masks now. <coughs> Why aren't you? Hmm? Hmm? I actually have a medical exemption, even I wear them. In fact, I have three different kinds. I have the disposable chuck away kind, in case I've gone somewhere and forgotten to bring a mask. I have disposable ones in my handbag. I have this particular pretty one, which is like a silk scarf that you tie around your neck, but it has a mask bit that flips up and then you can tuck it away and it looks like a silk scarf still, very pretty. And my other one, which is currently over there to be washed, because it's got makeup on it, uh, actually has a clear window, a clear perspex window here, so that my deaf friends can still lip read. Please bear that in mind. If you see a mask that has a perspex window, please get it. And make it your main mask that you wear the majority of the time. Deaf people will thank you. Right. So. Uh, this is still a teaching channel. 
I forgot my own bloody intro now. Is this a teaching channel? Uh, I'm probably going to stick some text up on screen. Don't be offended by the fact I'm putting text up. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm still getting people complaining about the fact that I don't speed anything up and I keep all of the blending and everything in. And I still get complaints. I'm also still getting complaints that I zoom in so tight that when I look down to get a brush or reload the pigment people are seeing my hairline. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming they're zooming through and just not registering what I'm saying. That being the case, I thought if I stuck text up on screen, maybe then they would see it, pause, read it, and I would get less held for review comments with some very, very rude words. Basically, my chronic pain and the fact that I want learners to be able to keep up with me means that I don't tend to cut anything out or speed it up. If I do, it's the exception to the rule. And the reason I zoom in so tight is because I'm 46. I'm aware as you get older, your eyesight ain't what it used to be. So if you take your glasses off to put your makeup on, and you're looking at me in a small phone screen, me being this far away ain't going to help. Me being zoomed right in, helpful. Right, before this gets too long, like I said, hopefully I'm going to cut some of these yawns out. Before this gets too long, I'm going to insert the clip where I discuss the difference between deep set and hooded eyes. And then I'll be back to apply, believe it or not, some Laura Lee uh, onto my eyes or my eyelids. Picked this up from Depop recently. She's uh, recently made it onto my I'm watching you because you're behaving list. So she's off of the shit list at the moment. And I just thought, I discussed this recently in my uh, top, top 10, was it, neutral palettes, um, because I've actually got quite a few, believe it or not. Right, here's the clip, see you at the other end. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly. And you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. 
So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to be using three different brushes. A big floofy brush, a medium floofy brush, or a small floofy brush, and a flat packer brush. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start off with a big floofy. I might zoom you in a fraction more. There we go. And like I said, I'm going in with this Nudie Patootie palette. The reason I like this is it's got a nice mixture of neutral, warm and cooler colours. And that peach is delightful, as is that mustard. Right, I'm going to start off by going in with a streaking. Uh, I've got my usual Chrome Pebble Primer on. Loaded the brush up. Always hold the brush at the end so you put as little pressure on as possible. And we're going to go in as usual with the Viennese Waltz Blend. Natural turns, fleckle, reverse turns. The reason we do this, as I said before, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. This side, I've got ridiculously deep creasing just here, as you can see. That was caused where the optician pulled my eye about when I was five years old. I'm trying to work out why I lost my sight in that side. Anyway, she'll begin. So I'm going to start about halfway between my crease and my brow. I'm just going to really lightly blend this across. Fleckle when I get there. Reverse turn to come back out. I'm going to try and get back into my three uploads a week. At the moment it's two still. Um, to be honest, I had that break because of pain 
and a heat wave. Speaking of which, I'll leave the fan off as long as I can, but if it gets too hot in the kitchen, I will have to put it back on. Um, and I'm now kind of at the position where I'm finding it very difficult to sit back down in front of the camera. I'm almost, almost like I'm as nervous as I was when I first started my channel, I'm like, uh, who's going to watch me, you know, it's... The growth of my channel has slowed right down. I mean, seriously, right down. Um, you know, I was growing every week by at least, sort of, at least two to three new subs a week, sometimes, you know, double figures new subs. And just recently that's that's not been the case. So doesn't help that YouTube keep deleting people. I'm still getting people saying to me I have to resub every bloody week to your channel. You know, they're going to get to the stage where they're not going to want to keep resubbing or they're going to forget about it. You know, YouTube are really being unhelpful. And whereas before you could kind of pre approve when you get to monetization, you know, when you get to the 1k subscribers and the 4k watch hours, you can kind of you could sign before you got there to say you accepted their terms and conditions. So that when you hit that stage, you just flick the switch and then they would check that you'd hit it and approve the channel. Now you have to re-sign all over again. So again, they're delaying the monetization process. Not that I'm anywhere near that yet, but, you know. Right. Now, obviously, when we're wearing masks, our eyes are what's going to be seen. So we can actually make a little bit more of our eyes than we would do normally. But obviously it still needs to be work appropriate, college appropriate, school appropriate. Right, I'm now going to go into the shade Reveal with the same fluffy brush. And I'm just going to do that a bit lower down, just above where my natural crease is just to build some depth as we go down the eye. Normally for work I'd do like a one and done colour and then either a lighter shade or maybe a satin on the lid and that would be it done but I think at the moment we can definitely pay more attention and do something just a little bit more interesting because when you've got your mask on if you haven't got one that's got the window in it your eyes are conveying your emotions to people as well you can tell if someone is smiling or not whether you can see their face uh, their mouth or not if it's a genuine smile it will show in their eyes see that just adds a little bit of depth of colour but it's blended very very softly so there's no obvious delineation of where one colour finishes and the next one starts. So yeah to try and get myself back into filming I've actually arranged a couple of collabs because that will make me get off my butt and film because otherwise I'm letting somebody else down. And buggering up their schedule. So, a couple of collabs hopefully next week. All being well. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. 
if it hasn't been a good one, well, I'm sorry, and I hope tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well, I hope it's going to be fabulous, darling. Okay, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. Uh, I stopped using colour switches some time ago because I find they are just too harsh on your brushes, especially your natural hair brushes. I mean, these are um, these are synthetic mm. the ones I'm using today, but even so. Right, I'm now going to go in with a smaller brush. And I'm going to go into a deeper shade. I'm going to go into a Butt Naked. It's not the deepest shade in the palette, but it's deeper. And I'm just going to do little tiny circles. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you follow your new line. So I'm just going to do little tiny circles just to buff the edges out and add a bit of depth through the crease there. The reason we put a deeper colour through the crease, partly to give definition to the eye but also if you have had to move your crease line, adding a deeper colour, anything dark recedes back, anything light comes forward. I'm just going to add a little bit of this same colour on the outer edge of my mobile lid. So by, if you've had to move your crease by adding a deeper colour along it, it gives the impression that that bit of the eye is further back. So it will help sell the illusion for you. Anything this side. I do sometimes struggle just here, as you could see from the previous colour not blending too well. Uh, I get very dry patches just there, and uh, it can cause me trouble sometimes getting a colour to blend particularly if I'm using a big old fluffy brush. I find if I use a smaller brush it tends to to blend better. So I don't tend to worry too much because it is in the area where I'm going to be putting a deeper colour anyway. So. And again, you know, this is... I know Miss Nona's going to love this look because she loves it when I do neutrals. I want to do natural looks rather than colour. <laughs> Again, clean the brush off. And I'm just going to get the flat packer brush now. This is the point, you need to decide what you feel most comfortable with. You could just go into something like Stark, which is the, the white or the creamy colour in the palette. And apply that over the lid. Or the inner two thirds of the lid I should say. I do have to stretch this lid out because of this creasing here, otherwise it um, it doesn't blend properly onto the lid, it just it builds up in the crease and then ends up flaking down my face during the day, which A is painful if it gets in my eye, and B doesn't look very professional. So you can just finish it off with a lighter shade or you could go in with the peach that's in here 
and do an all matte look or if you can wear it at your workplace you can go into a shimmer uh, I'm going to go into exposed now normally I would wet my brush with a shimmer that intensifies the shine so if you're doing it for work I wouldn't bother wetting the brush to be quite frank um, you will probably get more fallout so do your eyes first or put a colour catcher here or some powder or something because we're not trying to do an evening smack you in the face look we're just adding a little bit of interest or brightness to the lid And apply it with your finger if you want but again that tends to apply it much brighter which you're not really going to want for an office look if you're going to put a shimmer on for the office it does need to be a little bit more toned down in most cases most offices Normally now I will pause you and go off and do my face but I'm going to show you the whole thing here because um, with wearing masks I tend to not wear foundation. Um, or if, you've, if your skin is at the point where you feel you need a foundation, if you've got a lot of hyperpigmentation like I've got here, then you can, what they call spot foundation, where you literally just put it on your fingers and just dab it into the areas that you need the extra coverage. Uh, I'm going to grab a. Uh, let's grab this one. This is the Hel the Elf Hydrating Camo Concealer in shade Febeige. And again, one, two, three. That really is all you need for your under eye. Even if you've got foundation, you do not need to be drawing these bloody ridiculous, humongous, great triangles. It's just not necessary. It really isn't. Right. Little snub nosed brush. You can use your finger if you prefer, but obviously if you're going to use your finger make sure your hands are clean before you start. Use a bit of the excess on that spot I've got there. I'm 
I as oh zoom you out a bit no wrong way zoom you out a little bit for a specific um, concealer and as usual uh, do you think I can find it? of course not right so I'm going in with this revolution heartbreaker in shade oat. Which is a little bit closer to my skin tone. And this is the one that I'm going to use to target breakouts. Not the song by Swing Out Sister from the 80s. And again, just blend those out. The reason I left this one till last is because it's the largest. So if you leave it a little bit and give the concealer those extra few seconds, it just gives you that extra bit of coverage. Like so. Now for my under eyes, I like to use this NYX. spilling a drink. I like to use this NYX colour correcting powder in lavender just to brighten the under eye area and I'll go in with a slightly looser brush And I'm literally just using that in the under eye area and the inner part of the nose there where it gets dark. You don't need much. I like to set my under eye. I've got oily combo skin anyway so I tend to have to set everything on my face. Um, but I do like setting um, my under eye area even if it is a concealer that will set down by itself because it does uh, help with longevity and eliminates some of the creasing you can get. Right, Coty Airspun Translucent Extra Coverage. But you can use any loose powder. I would advise against using a pressed powder because pressed powder tends to go on heavier. So I'm just going to get this uh, it's a Voldemorphy JS3. I'm just going to use this to push into the areas initially where I'd set or covered spots and blemishes. 
then I'm gonna go in. If I had foundation on, I would also use the denser brush to pack foundation onto my nose as well to help hold foundation on my nose but obviously I've not got foundation so I'm going to go in with this BH number 2 brush and just dust over the rest of my face to help eliminate shine And if you have had to spot um, foundation, this will help blend and disguise where you've put that. So it's not obvious that this bit has foundation on and that bit doesn't. But if you can leave your skin foundation free, I would advise doing so because if you're going to be under a mask most of the time what's the point um, and you know why why sort of smother your skin when you don't need to I'm going with a my cover effects blush this is pink dahlia and I literally get an angled, I think this is actually a contour brush, and I dip into both and tap off and start quite high up on the temples to pop my blush on because obviously This will be above the majority of my mask. Up a little bit above the brows, a little bit on the nose. I do put a little bit down there just so that if I do take my mask off for whatever reason kind of helps hide the double chinage. And then I'm going to go in with my butter bronzer. Look at the pan on that! <coughs> this is um, a Coastal Scents brush. And again, you don't need to do much. Because the majority of the time that's all going to be under your mask anyway. Clamp your brush like this. If you want to do your nose. And again, I do pop a little bit just along my jawline. Just in case I have to take my mask off for whatever reason. Now, you need to decide for yourself how comfortable you are or not in wearing a highlight to work. Now, normally I go for blinding highlights, as you know. But I do have this hourglass euphoric strobe light highlighter which is much more subtle and I like to just pop this because that's one of the reasons we mixed our blush so we got a combination of matte and shimmer blush
and then I just add a little bit of this euphoric strobe light just to the very very tops of my cheekbones just to add a little bit of zhuzh okay right I'm going to zoom you back in finish the eyes off Elio. Right, this is my pink honey, uh, honey glue and strawberry sherbet. Get your spoolie. I don't wet my spoolie. They recommend wetting your spoolie. I prefer not to because I like soap to be a little bit sticky when it goes on because then when I apply powder over the top the powder has something to stick to and the powder then sets the soap into place and I just found that that holds my brows through the day. You don't have to have a specific brow item to do that, you can just use a bar of soap and a spoolie. And then using the other end I'm going to go into Nakey Nakey, which is the deepest brown. And just spoolie that. Through my brow. This is how I get my different coloured brows without having to buy a million different coloured pomades. And then going back in with a little fluffy brush, I'm going to dip into Bear, which is the peach that I've not used yet. I'm just going to run that very lightly along the lower lash line. Now I wouldn't normally do a lower lash line for work, but as I said at the moment your eyes are having to do all of your um, all of your talking where people would normally look at your mouth to see whether you're happy, sad, angry, disappointed or whatever at the moment your eyes are having to do all of that and I'm going to grab my Makeup Revolution Renaissance Flick and this is the brown version. Uh, I do like the Renaissance Flick liner. Very very comfortable to hold. Brush isn't too firm or too wobbly so it's great for all skill levels and as well as the black they do a brown and a blue
And yes, I was talking while applying a wing. I must be feeling confident all of a sudden. I do have a mini tutorial in my mini tutorials playlist on how to do winged liner. Or I'll talk you through step by step. But as you can see, once you've been doing winged liner long enough, doesn't take long to do at all. And don't get me wrong, I still have moments when I end up with an, uh, an Amy Winehouse flick. The majority of the time, I manage reasonably well. I'm going to go in with this Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Do you see what I mean about the size of this brush now? Look at it in comparison to my eye. Now you can leave it at this. If you want, you could put a um, funky coloured liner in your waterline if you really wanted to. Um, or you could, for example, let me grab a highlight from over here. You can pop. A little bit of a brighter pop just on the inner tear duct like so. And along the tail of the brow. You could also do that with the white that I used. If you don't feel comfortable wearing uh, a shimmer in those areas. Now in terms of lipstick, the majority of the time that I am wearing a mask I just have lip salve on. Literally, I just I take the opportunity to get a good lip salve. My current favourite is the Sol de Janeiro Bum Bum Kiss or Brazilian Kiss. That is so God, what is up with my lighting today? Hello. It's gone particularly bright outside, which is not helping with my that's uh, kind of working. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Brazilian Kiss. Nine times out of ten I'll just put that on. Because 
people aren't going to see it behind your mask anyway. If you are going to apply a lipstick, it needs to be a liquid lipstick. And you need to make sure you've got time to let it dry properly before you go anywhere. Now I'm going to go in with this Gerard Cosmetics in a shower. Um, this is a good dupe for the uh, Jeffrey Androgyny lipstick if you're looking for one. Uh, I do have a discount code with Gerard. I do earn a small commission from it if you use it. All my discount codes are listed in the description box below and all clearly state if I earn from them or not. Now, to apply liquid lipstick, put your doe foot at 45 degrees. Do your inner line, keeping it at the same angle, do the outside of the other edge of your lip. Back to the middle, 45 degrees the other way. Repeat. Turn it upside down and go from the corner to the lines you've just made. Fill in. That's your easy way of doing your lipstick. Straight line across the middle. Link it to the corners. Fill in. That, my friends, is how to get a perfectly lined lip using your doe foot without the need for lip liner. So, as I said, this is shade share. Okay, I'm going to pause you while I do something with my hair, and I'll be back with my final thoughts. Sorry folks, had to stick the fan on. It has got stupid hot in my kitchen again. So, here is the finished look. Work appropriate. when you're wearing a mask. Turn that back off because it is ridiculously hot and having that on does not help. So, this is my finished look which, I mean, to be honest, you could probably get away with this at work, whether you're wearing a mask or not. But, it does emphasise the eyes more by having them lined, by having just that little bit extra work on them, rather than just the one colour and done. Um, it really helps to emphasise your emotions and what you're feeling when people can't see your mouth. So, because I'm melting here and unfortunately this is like a nylon-y material which is great because you can rinse it out in the sink, hang it up and within like 10 minutes it's dry again. Um, but it, it does get you a little bit, a little bit, a little bit warm, shall we say. Uh, but yeah, that is, that is my finished look. Work appropriate for when you are wearing a mask. 
Um, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I will also be doing a going out look for mask wearers um, so that when you are on public transport heading to your destination you can still look snatched. Right, as I said before people are still getting deleted so please double check you're still subscribed. Uh, notifications apparently at the moment whether you've got the bell on or not they're not emailing you but seeing how they made that change without telling anybody now there's a pretty good chance they'll change it back without telling anybody so it's worth ringing the bell and checking because when they did the last update not only did they decide they're not going to email us anymore but they knocked all of um, all of my notifications from all to personalised. So it might be worth going through and double checking to see if yours have been knocked the same way. If you're new to my channel and you've stumbled over me somehow, hi, hello, welcome, I'm glad you made it. Uh, normally I do much more colourful looks than this, uh, as you will see if you look at any of my other films. Uh, it would be lovely if you would like to join the 4F family, it's super easy to do. You hit the subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you can ring my bell if you like and choose all notifications. As I said a couple of minutes ago, whether you'll actually get notified is another matter. But, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, I've got an awful lot of films on here. Just basically pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and chill darling and just relax listening to me witter on about nonsense whilst applying coloured pigments to my facial area right my lovelies as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.